Hello, the Earth. Is there someone? Here is Initiative Coeur. Do you hear me? Hello, hello. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Here is Initiative Coeur. Hello, the Earth. Is there someone? Answer me. We're here, Tongi. Don't worry. Sorry for the Mayas, their calendar, and all who speculated on their prediction the end of the world wasn't for right away. The seventh week of the Vendée Globe was more about the other end of the world between the Indian and the Pacific Ocean where navigate a nice string of deep sea skippers. It's in these surroundings we celebrated our reunion with Alex Thompson, absent from our screens for the last three weeks because of energy saving. Hi everyone, so here I am, a third of the way through the Vendée Globe. I'm currently in fourth position. It's a bit wet and cold out here. Currently the boat's going very fast, doing 25 knots of boat speed, and it's a little bit damp. Christmas is going to be a little bit different for me than for you guys. This is what my Christmas dinner's going to look like. And I'm not sure Santa Claus is going to visit me, but just in case, I'm growing a beard. Anyway, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Well, Alex, calm down. Christmas is on December 25th, and we'll get to that. But while waiting, let's focus on the race and on its leaders who make up its fast pace. Hey, hey, hey it's almost Christmas. December 23rd, we have great conditions. It's nice, a real treat. Roughly since December 10th, Francois Gabard and Armel Lecléache haven't parted. Not happy enough to widen a substantial gap with their pursuers, they interchange the lead as others would trade courtesies. To resume, they've gotten used to each other, which can be explained. With the AIS, which allows you to detect boats within 10 miles, we see each other on the screen. It's a good mark in terms of speed and trajectories. Now I try to devote myself to my route and future weather choices. For sure, we have somehow similar boats, softwares, and our weather files are identical. Therefore, our routes are bound to have similarities. But for the time being, there are no great options taken. They too, we thought, were inseparable. Well, we were mistaken. I'm going to show you where we are. Here in pink, Orange is Mike Golding, then Axiona in gray, and in red is my friend Dominique Vavre. We're south of Tasmania. All right, I've said it all. What Jean-Luc Cam omitted to say is that by avoiding the little anti-cyclonic bubble, he broke the pack that tied him to his companions. In less than 72 hours, he atomized them and left them 400 miles behind. Taking a closer look to the back of the fleet, one can wonder if the Vendée Globe can still be considered a race. Nevertheless, with Alessandro Di Benedetto, the doubt can arise. The boat is surfing. The reality is that the Franco-Italian shows, if nothing else, a 4,700 miles delay. And now, off to the next passage obligé, the Australia Westgate. Go, 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 Team Plastique. Go, go, go. A 60 feet surfboard. The reality Alessandro doesn't care for. So at the end, with no apocalypse, Christmas turned out well to help us get over our lost emotions. Here, Merry Christmas. We even have a tree. All's ready. Santa, we're waiting for you. Alessandro is asleep. Ha, ha, ha. It's not easy here. Ha, ha, ha. I brought presents. Ha, ha. Team Plastique rhymes with sympathetic. Ha, ha, ha. Party time. Christmas. Have great holidays. Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm going to knock myself out with chocolate, my rhum glaces, and my canned food for once. And I wish you all a Merry Christmas. All right, I didn't really want to, but I'll do it. If you know what I think about it, but still, let's do it. Oh, Merry Christmas. I'll make myself a good meal 
open presents. It's a great day, it's beautiful. Beautiful in the Indian Ocean South. By now, off to open the presents. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. It's quite extraordinary what they can get us to do. But what are all these presents? It's not possible. It's not possible, it's full of presents. There are candies, champagne, marron glaces. So, Santa, you exist? Santa! Santa Claus! There he is with the reindeers! He's flying off! Bye! Bernard Stem didn't get to the party, didn't have the heart to it. The Swiss is on his way to the Oakland Islands south of New Zealand. With heavy hydro generator troubles, he must imperatively repair before attempting the cross of the Pacific Ocean. De Niro, Bernard is at the mooring since 5.50 precisely this morning. Exactly, 4.53 UT. He unsealed his engine's propeller shift to reach an optimal security mooring spot. One word, Dennis. When a skipper stops, he can't get off. He must repair himself and remain on his boat. A quick look at the basic rules. It's a race with no stopovers and no assistance, which means he's not allowed to disembark beyond the open sea limits and can't get outside assistance. A scientific boat neared Bernard Stam's boat a few hours ago. What precisely happened is that Bernard was in a bad weather spot with rain and wind and he noticed his boat's anchor was coming home. Under these conditions, he decided his boat was at risk and chose to attempt to tie up to the boat next to him, a Russian boat. And he's going to leave Oakland Island in the next hours for the New Zealand South Island. Because of deteriorating weather conditions, Fernastam is looking for a safer shelter. There was a serious risk his boat would drift to the coast and the Swiss didn't wish to play with fire. Four years ago at the same time, he had been through similar misadventures off the Kerguelen Islands. Image is an event that marked the previous edition. The thought of living a similar episode was out of the question. The least we can say is that Bernard Stam's arrival in New Zealand didn't go unnoticed. A Swiss solo sailor competing in the Vendée Globe round the world races on his way again after being forced to make a pit stop near Dunedin. A former winner of the Around Alone race, Bernard Stam, had been in fifth place when he had to divert here to New Zealand to fix his generators. For sure, it's not daily routine to see a 60 feet emoka at the mooring in this part of the world. These images, provided by New Zealand Television, show Bernard Stam was able to restart repair on his hydro generators. As he was about the repairs, he got the surprising news the race committee was filing a complaint following his anchoring to the Russian boat. A case to be followed in which Bernard Stam will have to prove he didn't get any assistance. While waiting for the committee to deliberate, the Chemini Pujolet skipper set off towards Cape Horn. And to note, five boats, with Jean Le Cam leading, had overtaken him. We're about to cross the anti meridian in less than two minutes. So I'm going to show you how it goes. We're going from east to west. Here, it's a moment I love. In fact, it's a line that crosses here, just east of New Zealand. A line that separates the 180 degree east of the 180 degree west. Here you clearly see Sinerciel coming closer to the anti-meridian. We're going to pass it, here. We're still east, 974, 980, 991, 996, there, we've passed to the west. So here, great, wonderful, yes. We can see it again on the map that Sinerciel passed the anti-meridian. There. For me, it's really something. That's how it is. About to pass the opposite longitude to the Greenwich Meridian, Jean Le Cam is in fifth position, less than 2,000 miles behind the leaders. After Christmas for the inseparables Le Cliache and Gabard, it sure looked like the year-end's truce. 
We have a transition zone ahead for the next 24 hours, then we'll be through the gate. At the same time, I don't think our routes are that much different. So to be followed, to be followed in the next hours. Hello, hello. Today's Thursday, December 27th. Still in the Pacific Ocean, and it's become a lot easier than the last days. The sea has flattened. Feels good. Honestly, it's quite enjoyable. The last three, four days were much more like huge waves crashing against the boat. So a little slide, easy going, is a nice treat. In ways of easy slide, the two liters speed has tremendously reduced. And this didn't go unnoticed by the tall blonde man with the blue boat in third position and in ambush. Things are going to change now because I think our friends Gabar and Le Cliache are slowing down drastically and I'll be able to catch up consequently in the coming days. And that's good news. Jean-Pierre Dix seems to have foresight talent. In 24 hours, it's 180 miles he's made up on the leaders. It's also going well for Alex Thompson with 170 miles in the same laps. At the end of the seventh week of the Vendée Globe, only Alessandro Di Benedetto was still in the Indian Ocean. That's it, we've passed. Cape Lewin on board Team Plastic. On the left, on port side, there's the moon towards Australia at 800 miles, less than 1,600 kilometers. Here, I'm here. This mark is Australia. So there'll soon be a party on board Team Plastic. Music tonight. So, Musica, maestro. The next cape for Alessandro will be Cape Horn, the most mythical of them all, which the leaders should pass next week, therefore next year.